Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab today. I was playing some Neo Geo earlier, and uh, it took me a while to set it up. I haven't set up for a long time. It's the first time I've tried out these pads from Japan. My brother got them in a well-known uh, game-type shop that you get there, and uh, it's pretty good. But while I was playing some shooties, um, I noticed every now and then it wouldn't go up. So I thought it was the wire... And every now and then it did kind of go up. Now we got the wire, but it varied as I push this. So I, I kind of think it's a good opportunity to service the uh, joystick and have a look inside. Because I've always wanted to see how they work because they are quite good. So I'm going to put a bit of a the back office towel down because I want to scrape it all up. It's uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it deserves respect. You can't really uh, obtain them too easily over here. So I'm just going to unscrew it. And it's amazing. Uh, I've, I ended up with two of these that my brother purchased and one I got from a buy -e order. And I think two of the three are like immaculate, like they've never been used. And looking at this one, this is one that has got a few scrapes on it and has been used. So it wouldn't be a surprise if it needed some clean up on the inside because Gosh, think of all the joysticks we used to have. They wouldn't last... Oh, they could last just six months, couldn't you? But they were rubbish. I'm talking about all the quick joys and all of that stuff that you would just get from Argos or wherever you bought it. Um, I think the zip stick used to last quite long, though. They had micro, micro switches. So, ooh, getting inside its crispy shell. I think we are going to need to remove just these big screws. I didn't know whether the... Uh, Clearly the screws that hold the whole joystick assembly in needed removing, but I think they do. So I'll pop that off. Ew, look at all that scuzzy stuff. <sighs> Ew, so crusty. So uh, yeah, it could be these crusties going. It's amazing, look how sealed this is. How the heck do they get in there? Now I'm hoping it's not the wire, because the wire is going to be a real pain to change and it's got nice over moulding and it has SNK stamped all over it. Let's hope it's just the micro switches, but they look like they need some decontamination before we even get into them. But I'm going to go a bit deeper. I almost did a video stream today and I wanted to play some Neo Geo games online, you know, through emulation. And... It dwelled on, it dawned on me, or well, dwelled with me, that I could uh, potentially just make a quick interface so that I could plug the uh, controller into my PC. So that's still something that I could have done. But fixing it first is probably a good idea. So you've got the two red buttons on the inner, and two grey on the outer, and it looks like you can't mix them up. You can't mix them up to the point that actually even these two red ones, look, the keyways the keyways for all the buttons are different. So these ones have a side to side, yeah? Three o'clock and nine o'clock. Then you can see these two are slightly north of that. Yeah, they must all have individual sizes and shapes. Let's just compare a couple, shall we? They are slightly different heights. Yeah, they are slightly different heights. Well, there you go. You should be able to take the whole shell apart, really, and give it a darn good washing. going to get the last couple of screws out now. It is a gorgeous pad by the way. I, it's the first time I've ever used one and I have to say it's absolutely sublime. You have not felt a joystick like this. I promise you it is an experience. I'm not too fussed about the buttons. I quite like micro switch buttons but I, if I recall the leaf sprung buttons are well these aren't even leaf sprung though are they but uh, in general uh, if, you, if you're playing I think someone told me that the leaf spring sprung buttons are better for shooters or something but these buttons aren't great but maybe after this cleanup they, they'll be okay so I've got rid of the um, circlip there and then there's a uh, doohickey and a spring and all of that is looking pretty filthy so we should be able to pop that off Good. Yeah, that is all full of hair, and ugh, it's really gross, actually. <laughs> to be honest, it's really gross. I think I'm going to go and just 
I've given them a wipe with pledge. I'm not massively happy about the cleanliness of that, but it's better than it was. I just want to just want to play games, just want to crack on, but oh, I feel ill in my tummy. Just look at this. It's so brown. It's so gross. All this hair in it. You can see that. Plenty of hair and looks like earwax or something. It's gross. Right, I'm going to hit it with some contact cleaner just to see if that will melt it. If not, we'll have to go in with the pledge. There you go. Look at that. That's what we're dealing with here. Whew. It's like there's not enough bleach in the world. I don't even know, want to know what this is. I really don't. Imported. Imported filth. Right, one more, one more hit with the pledge has got some antibacterial properties, but I don't want to hit so much that it soaks through into the body of any of the micro switches because they won't like that. Well, it's, it's not looking too bad now that it is cleaning up. Though. Let's be fair. I don't know how old uh, a Neo Geo CD is, but I suspect it could be from the 90s or something. It's going to be. It's not a spring chicken, put it that way. It could have been around the block a few times. Right. Now let's push up this little red washer. Good opportunity to give it a little wipe. Okay. So the idea was that there was potentially issues with the micro switch. That's, that's how I felt. But looking at this, there's two things, I think. One, I should have paid attention to what the orientation was when I took it out of the unit, so I know which way is up, which I no longer know. And two, this wiring, I think, seems pretty good. It's, it's standard arcade style. There's really not too much there. But let's open this lid and uh, take a close look at the micro switches therein. I should think I'm going to add some performance to my gameplay now, though, with my cleanup, because all these contacts and things will be much happier. So these are absolutely legit proper micro switches. So what you can do for each one, I'm going to be super careful because I don't want to mess too much with it. In fact, I could just get them out like that and try to remember which way round they were. And I'll go clean this bit in a moment. But get your contact cleaner, and I'm going to give them a good old squirt in and around the whole switch. That noise you hear is the patio being jet washed. Um, I tried to stop the video but it sounds like it's going to go on for a long time. So I thought I'd just speak a little bit louder and you'd have to hear me over the noise. So I've cleaned the part here. I've also cleaned the uh, buttons and this plastic thing, which is really interesting because that is that piece of plastic that you find in legit arcades because you see it's actually textured here and you're never going to even see that texture. So that's in there. The next part is uh, the, the motherboard or the PCB. Um, and uh, while uh, while we were off offline off air for a moment, I, I did tweak these, make sure that they're clicking nicely, while the contact cleaner was evaporating. So let's have a look at the board. Now we can see this is a very simple board. There's not too much on it to go wrong. You've got this looks like a hex buffer there, um, but it is dirty, and it's dirty on these contact points. So these are all the points where the actual buttons touch and interestingly enough you've got to be careful here look they've got some basically jumpers just jumping across the circuit written and written written uh, printed in the same technology so that's a, a way that they could get effectively another second layer on a single layer board so that's quite cute never really seen that before so quick squiz of the contact cleaner and be careful of what solvent you use you don't want to have something that's going to eat 
that conductive paint so be a bit ginger maybe do a little bit of a test corner if you want if you're not sure on your solvent if you don't have fancy schmancy contact cleaner and by the way I like the WD-40 one no affiliation unless they want to send me some um, IPA IPA is fine you probably have some of that if you're uh, if you've been stocking up on your COVID spares and I could see here you might just catch it in the light there's a very definite wear circle on that one so I might just give it the tiniest bit more love just the tiniest bit oh I thought, the, I thought the pressure washing was going to stop there, but no, it just goes on and on and on. So those are nice and clean. I suppose if you did have one of those PCB cleaner pens, I mean, we, should we have a look to see what would happen if you hit it with one of those on the sort of piece? I put it on the fiberglass end. Let's just touch a little corner. Ooh. Mmm, now look at that. Now is that a good colour or is that a bad colour? It's hard to tell, isn't it? This thing's a bit too knackered. Look, my me end me end is a bit too knackered here, but might might just I think it's worth the time. If you've got one of these by the way and it's not doing it for you, because the end's got cruddy, just uh, just trim it. I'm not gonna trim it over there though, done it all over me PCB, but yeah. You can hear me snipping away off camera. Which is quite apt really because I did give myself a haircut today. If you're on my Twitter you'll see that uh, I gave myself a haircut. I don't think it's too bad. I'm just going to wrap this one up, shove it back in. So these are basically strands, zillions of strands of fiberglass. Let's see if we can get it in a different way, this might be better. And uh, they're in this mechanism and as you turn it basically you retract or uh, insert more of the fiberglass and it's supposed to pop out the end but it doesn't always always work and be careful though you don't want to cut yourself on it you can yes better right let's do it now in my opinion that is probably worth doing so I am going to do that to all of them and it's just buffing it to a fine polish and you can see the end of the fiberglass pen is getting dirty so it's taking off a little layer remember there's not much carbon to start with though so don't go nuts you're just looking for enough to give it a fine polish like a bit of rouge, a bit of jeweler's rouge on it. <laughs> Good. Now to complement all of those, really you want to take these domes, and you could probably give them a wash to be honest in the sink if they're really dirty. These ones are not, they're, they're dirty, dusty, but they're not too bad, not enough for me to bother. Um, but I'm just going to give them a little hit with that contact cleaner. I'm going to start with the first one because it's had a little bit of time to have a little soak and I'm just going to dab it just like that. You can see the pad is nice and clean and the remnants are on the tissue. So just going to do that to all of them. Neo Geo Neo Geo Oh they're looking really good. You can tell when I hold them up, that they've got much matte finish now. Before they were slightly shiny, now they're definitely a matte finish. I did use that opportunity, as I said, to clean up some of these other springs and all the other bits and pieces. So we've got to reassemble this. And you probably could take a photo before you disassemble it if you think there's a chance. Like me, you will forget how it was assembled. But I think we, I think we're all right. I think we figured that out. You can't really get simpler than that. The only the only issue you might have is is which way round is the up and the down and all of those things, the leftwards, the rightwards. And this plate also has those same divots. It's a very nice design. We had some custom stamping made for this thing, I can tell you. I think 
these were the right screws. Although the other holes look equally as tapped. <laughs> oh dear. I can't uh, see from the case here, the enclosure, it shouldn't matter really which way round you put them. So I'm just going to have a quick test. Yeah, okay. I think everything else goes in once we start reassembling. So we'll start reassembling. So this would have gone in. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that way. That makes way more sense. And got to be careful here. I'm just going to check because there are those holes and they would line up exactly with the ones I put my screws in. So don't put your screws in there. So I'm going to swap those out. going to assemble our domes. Now remember these buttons only go in one way which is great but these domes are interchangeable but make sure that this lip goes all the way around the receptacle. You might have to lift the pad up for that. That damn pressure washer all day. Have you been pressure washing? I'm hitting that mildew. Let's go. Let me get these screws in. I quite like the way the stick is constructed so that the enclosure puts a good amount of pressure on the PCB stops it flexing under those intense gaming moments and it also means it doesn't need a whole load more screws in here that you'd expect this to have. Okay, joystick time. So first goes the spring, then goes the actual the actual part that touches the micro switches. Oh my word! We forgot that! Go, oh, that's a nightmare getting that in afterwards. There it is. There it is. We're good, we're good. Okay, spring again now. Doodad. Then we're going to put the knob in from the other side. There it is. It's really. That probably is better done after you've screwed this back in. Let's get this screwed in first before anything else goes amiss. Just going to hit that. Do that'll do nicely. Right, let's get our knob in. And we're gonna need our spring. We're gonna need our bearing. I'm gonna push that down. I'm gonna so I'm pushing on the table to push the knob up, and I'm pushing this down at the same time with my fingers, keeping that spring under compression, because we need to get this circlip on and Oh, there we go. I thought we put more of a fight. <laughs> that is looking good. Look at that the action there. That sounds really good. That sounds like a, a far stronger click than it was making before. So we're gonna just make sure there's no wires in the way. Pop our strain relief through, in and around, in and around, round the gums. Out. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. 
The only thing I think would be nice would be to do something with this green wire, make sure all of the wires are out of the way so that's nice and clear. Back on. You've got your big screws here. It's nice. It's nice to know why they have all these big screws and things, isn't it? You wouldn't, you wouldn't really, you could guess until you've opened it up. You don't really appreciate that. And it's nice that they haven't used any security bits. I wonder if SNK, they kind of probably didn't mind you trying to keep this serviced. They were making arcade boards, right? People always service their machines. They're used to that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend. <laughs> in my mind that SNK were thinking of their owners in that way. They wanted you to be able to keep your equipment running. Judging by the thickness of this wire though, this is crazy thick. If you look at it, it's like mains lead. It says on it, 80 degrees C, AWG. I mean that, it's a serious bit of cable there. It's, it's totally overrated for what it should be, but for SNK, they wanted you to do some hard gaming and they wanted to make sure that they could justify that billion pound price ticket they were charging for these at the time. Sorry about the noise, it still hasn't stopped, but I took the opportunity to go and try this out and that seems to have cured it. So I don't really know what was stopping it going up. It might have just been an internal thing on the leaf of the micro switch, a bit of gunk. You could see there was slight corrosion on stuff, but it seems to have sorted itself out now. So uh, that's it. I'm going to go put some uh, more games on that. I'm thinking of Prehistoric Isle 2 or some Neo Turf Masters. What's your favourite SNK Neo Geo game? And are you going to have a bit of clean of your stick now? As ever, Please like, share, subscribe, leave comments down below, come and shout me on Discord, buy me a coffee on Patreon, but as ever, thank you for watching.